Nearly 50 years ago, President Nixon signed the Endangered Species Act into law, which was designed to do two things. Number one, prevent species from going extinct. And number two, promote their recovery back to health and healthy populations. Since then, hundreds of plants and animals have joined the endangered or threatened species list spurring conservation and recovery efforts at all level, levels of government. While this landmark species protection law is well-intentioned and has accomplished many good things, it has become an endless source of conflict and unfortunately, many rightly consider it a dismal failure. The Endangered Species Act hasn't seen meaningful reform since 1973. And since then, less than 3% of species have recovered and been delisted. <clears throat> the Congressional Western Caucus has long advocated for improvements to modernize the ESA and make it more effective for our species and more transparent for the American people. My colleagues in the caucus have advocated on behalf of the rural communities that we, we represent who are severely impacted by the ESA listing decisions and who, in many cases, are working in collaboration with private landowners, community groups, tribes, and local governments to promote successful species recovery and land conservation. And we have advocated to administration after administration the need to follow the science and fulfill the congressional intent of the law which is to promote recovery of these species and then remove them from the endangered species list. That's why I am so proud to host this special order tonight, where you will hear from several of my Western Caucus colleagues about successful locally-led recovery efforts taking place across the country, the different impacts that ESA listing decisions have had on local communities and economies, and some of the legislative reforms needed to finally bring the ESA into the 21st century. Over the past few years, the Trump administration made great progress by finalizing several updates to the ESA to modernize this bedrock law and to improve our ability to protect endangered and threatened species and celebrate our recovery successes. The Trump administration created a transparent process for designating crit critical habitat for listed species and finalized a common sense definition that a critical habitat must indeed be critical to the species at, at hand. Who would have thought? They streamlined and modernized the process for consultation between government agencies de to determine the scope of listing impacts, including requiring the consideration of the economic impacts a listing could have on local economies. Lastly, they finalized a rule that rewards state and landowners for successful recovery actions by loosening mandated regulations on species management as the species begin to recover and are downlisted from endangered to threatened. Unfortunately, Earlier this month, the Biden administration announced plans to rescind or reverse these improvements. This is exactly the wrong direction we should be head heading, Madam Speaker. As we have seen over the past four decades, the ESA has become a weapon used by extreme environmentalists and serial lit litigators to slow or halt critical economic development and land, land management projects in rural communities throughout the United States. From preventing the restoration of our forests to creating overburdensome roadblocks for domestic energy development, the, e the ESA in its current form simply does more harm than good. Oftentimes, these ESA regulations negatively impact the very people we need as conservation partners. Through land use restrictions, reduced property values, and costly permitting requirements, unilateral and far-sweeping listing decisions remove incentive for these local partners to come to the table. In effect, 
it makes enemies out of the people who are most critical to our efforts instead of treating these species like the assets they are to our local lands. We must empower our local, state, and tribal partners to collaborate on comprehensive recovery and conservation efforts. And we know this to be true. More stringent regulations will not lead to more successful species recovery. In rural America, we value the responsible management of plants, animals, and native species, but we have to do, we have to do so in a way that doesn't destroy our economies, decimate our lands, or leave our communities vulnerable to natural disasters. We need flexible tools, not one-size-fits-all regulations from the federal government to be successful in our shared goal of recovery of our nation's endangered and threatened species. Tonight, we are here to raise our, our, the voices of rural communities who are impacted by the ESA and to make our message heard. And with that,